Welcome back. In this second video for lesson A15, you will continue to work with Python code as we work to better understand some of the complexities of working with strings and integers. Okay, so in this video, you will learn about some of the challenges in working with both strings and integers in code and how to convert a value to an integer as well as how to convert a value to a string. Okay, so let's get started. As you learned in the previous lesson, strings are one or more characters made up of letters, numbers, or symbols. You can ask Python if the string six with quotation marks equals the string six with quotation marks and it'll evaluate as true. This happens because these two characters are the same. Much like Python would say that the strings, the string A and the string A are equal. You can also add string A to string A and you'll get an output of string AA. And we worked on that back a couple lessons ago with the idea of merging strings. Okay, so this all worked great in previous lessons to do things like add my name is and name together to get a full sentence. The problem occurs when you try to do mathematical calculations with strings of numbers. So let's look at an example. Okay, what number do you think will be printed to the console as variable C? Here's a hint, it's not six. 42 will be printed because Python will have added the character four to the character two resulting in 42. Python doesn't understand that these characters represent numeric values because with the quotation marks, Python views them as strings or text, right? To use a character for math, Python must understand that the character is a numeric value known as an integer. All right, so let's take a look at the examples in this table. In the first row, the six is surrounded by quotation marks, so Python will interpret the six as a string, piece of text, right? We've learned this before. And while Python will store it as a variable x, Python won't use it for a mathematical function because it doesn't see it as a number. In the second row, there's no quotation mark. So Python will interpret this six as a numeric value or an integer called variable x. The last one is a bit of a problem. Let's say we've written a program where we've asked the user to type in a number but Python is gonna store that answer as a string and we need the number the user entered to do some math later in the program. So how do you use an input of six for a mathematical equation when Python is storing it as a string? Fortunately, Python has a great way to convert back and forth between strings and integers. The command for converting a numeric string to an integer is int and then we have those opening and closing parentheses. So you're just going to insert a variable value between the parentheses and Python will convert the value to an integer. So you can use that value for math purposes. Okay, but remember this will only work on numeric values. There's no magic here. Attempting to convert the string value apple into an integer will result in Python having an error because only numbers are allowed to be stored as integers, right? <laughs> Python's not gonna magically turn apple into a number. Here are some more examples of converting a string to an integer. So on top, we see that Python will initially store the value 42 as a string in variable x. But using the integer conversion command, we can convert the value of x from a string to an integer and store it as a new value in the variable y. This integer command can be really useful um, in activity number three for this lesson, where you'll convert the numeric user input from a string to an integer so you can compare it to other numbers later in the program. But what if you have the opposite problem? Let's say you have an integer you need to convert to a string so you can combine it with another string. Remember, Python can't merge integers and strings to be displayed together, so you must convert any integers to strings before you can merge them. On the top, you can see the command to convert a value to a string. It can be used just like the integer conversion command we just discussed, and here are some examples. At the top of the table, you'll see the value 42 doesn't have any quotation marks around it, so Python will interpret this as an integer and store it as the value in the variable x. With the next command, Python will take the current value of x and convert it to a string and store that new value in the variable y. This ability to convert strings to integers and integers to strings can be helpful when trying to print integers and strings together. 
So as I previously mentioned, Python cannot concatenate or merge, remember that fancy word means merge, strings and integers together in the same print command. Okay, let's look at these examples. On the left side, the print statement is attempting to merge the string your number is with the integer value of x. This is going to cause an error. But on the right side, the integer value x is first converted into a string value called variable y. This allows the print statement to combine the string your number is with the string 42, and the sentence your number is 42 will then be printed to the shell. Now, when you're writing code, the conversions we've been discussing can happen within a single line of code. For example, in lesson A13, you use this statement to bring in user input as an integer. Normally, the input command will bring in any value entered as a string, even numeric values. The problem with this is, of course, you can't perform math operations on a string, even when the string is something like six. That six might as well be apple or tree. Python has no idea how to subtract two from apple or from six when it sees the six as a string. Okay, so the input string must be converted to an integer using the int with the parentheses command. Now, there are a couple of ways to accomplish this task. With option number one, the input from the user is initially saved to the variable var. Then the int command is used with var. We'll take the integer value var and overwrite the string value of var with the integer value. The second option is to do this by wrapping the int command around the entire input command. In this example from lesson A13, the user has asked for input. That input is converted to an integer, and that integer value is saved to the variable called var. And this, this way of writing code is slightly more complicated looking, but it does result in one less line of code. Okay, before you move on to the activities for this lesson, let's take a few moments and review the concepts we've just discussed in this last video, um, as well as the video before. Now, we've spent the last video discussing nested if statements, which are handy if you need to have multiple criterion decisions dependent on other decisions within the program. And when working with if statements, indentation is of course critical. Not only does the conditional statement need to be indented, but we use indentation to communicate what criteria are dependent on other criteria so the code is nested within other code. Like the example we talked through with the three digit lock, Without proper indentation, Python doesn't understand that all three digits must be entered correctly. In this video, we've talked through the challenges when working with strings and integers. Strings can't be used for mathematical functions, and strings and integers can't be merged. So the solution is to use commands to convert a string to an integer or an integer to a string, and we also walk through some practical examples for setting up this code in your program, either as a two-line option or a slightly more complicated one-line option. Now that you've learned to work with nested if statements and convert integers to strings and strings to integers, go ahead and move on to the activities for this lesson.